For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. The future of compliance training. Where is compliance training headed? In the 2020 update, the DOJ stated, Companies have invested in shorter, more targeted training sessions to enable employees to timely identify and raise issues to appropriate compliance internal audit or other risk management functions. While this tactical solution has proven useful, I wanted to consider the broader compliance training themes that compliance professionals have learned over the past years to gain insight into where compliance training may be headed. I sat down with Sean Rogers to ask him for some of his thoughts. Rogers believes that one of the goals of compliance training is to evolve to be more respectful of users' time and intellect. This would entail making compliance training much less repetitive and the companies figure out ways to give learners credit for the training they have taken in some in the past. No other compliance, no other training discipline makes the learner take mandatory training on the same learning objectives year after year. Rather than giving the learners credit for understanding and internalizing and applying the training they've received in the past, they just keep repeating the same learning objectives. To eliminate monotony, companies try to take different approaches, but in the final analysis, they are teaching the same basic learning objectives. Roger suggests embracing the concept of teaching once or maybe twice and frequently using much shorter, more focused communications as reminders. Another area for change is what Roger's term training abuse, and by this he means the tendency of companies and government officials to apply or require problems that give the illusion that something is being done. In other words, moving away from training as check-the-box mentality, one which is seen as a part of a compliance ecosystem. Roger's pointed to many state governments which are now requiring companies to implement anti-harassment training and repeat it every year or every other year. There are only so many ways you can train people on anti-harassment and there's so many learning objectives associated with this. Yet in many jurisdictions, companies have to provide annual training to employees, not because the training will change anything when it's done for the fifth or tenth time, because it is required by law. This becomes another form of tax on the company and annoys and frustrates the learners, which undermines the effectiveness of the training. When a company is hit by a major scandal, often the first response is, we will require training. This decision is typically motivated by a desire to send a signal that the company recognizes it has a problem and it's going to train people into behaving properly. The problem with this approach is that it seems to follow the letter of the 2020 update mandate to train on the lessons learned from prior compliance incidents, but in reality does not follow the spirit, which is to understand the failure, remediate the problem, and then training on the solution so employees will act as your first line of a compliance defense. This is compounded by perhaps 98% of the problems a company faced are caused by 2% of the employees. So for 98% of the employees, the training becomes punitive rather than helpful, and the 2% of bad actors simply ignore it. But there's been an illusion created that the company is taking steps to fix the problem and getting headlines and publicity for doing so. The company thinks it's met its requirements, It is through a variety of strategies and techniques that allow a company to identify and monitor such bad actors in order to get rid of them or have controls in place over them. There are some ethics and compliance topics that everyone in a company needs to be have awareness of. For example, every employee needs to know the company has a code of conduct and where to find it, how to search and what it contains. Every employee needs to know about a company's hotline and how to report issues. Every employee needs to know about the company's non-retaliation policy and the protection it provides. Yet employees need to be aware of safety policies and procedures as well. However, when it comes to more serious legal and regulatory risks, not every employee has the same level of risk exposure. Take bribery, for example. Most employees need to know the company's position on bribery and that the company has a policy. These employees need understanding at an awareness level, not at a highly technical level. However, there are some employees that are in such a position that to either offer bribes or be bribed because of their job function or their location. These employees need in-depth training on how to handle these situations, and this approach dovetails in with the 2020 update, which specified your training focus on employees in relevant control functions, provide tailored training for high-risk and control employees, including training that addresses risks in the area where the misconduct occurred, provide supervisory employees supplemental training. This means as a compliance professional, we need to 
be become more adept at training that is adapted and tailored for the risks of specific individuals or groups. This could be accomplished by better profile learners through HR data, using adaptive online training, by focusing on training campaigns to high-risk audiences. This just-in-time training model of exactly when and where the employee needs the information. More importantly, companies that provide insider training of annual training requirements. A company might do better to include some type of micro training or policy reminders at specific times as well. So what are today's three key takeaways? Number one, a business crisis almost always starts with a cultural failure and you can't train your way out of that. Two, focus your most detailed training on employees who are truly high risk. And three, there should be just-in-time training for those employees who need it. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'd like to thank you again for joining me for this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program, and I hope you will join me for our next episode tomorrow. This podcast series on 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.